Hey everybody, hello and good afternoon greetings from Hagerstown, Maryland. I am your host, Johnny B. Good. But the star of the show, of course, is no other than Baby Blue. Haha. <laughs> Alright, a word from our sponsors, which is ADL Transport. A very small company, but so far in the 26 years of my driving career, I find it to be the best place to work for and work with. You will be disappointed to know that I don't have a driver's ID number. If that's your kind of thing, well, I <laughs> suppose we can accommodate you. <laughs> One of the things that we will not be able to accommodate you with is uh, well, uh, is the hugging t uh, problem. Yep. What? <laughs> You're on your own on that one. There will be no hugging. We uh, will accommodate you just about everything else. But the hugging part, well, you'll have to, I don't know, maybe ask your kids, your wife, your brother, your mom. But anything else, I mean, you can't beat that deal right there. You just can't. All right, we have been uh, instructed to go through Baltimore. But we're not going to go through the tunnel. We're going to go around the bypass to avoid the tolls and really to avoid uh, the traffic in downtown Baltimore. But uh, Thomas over here wants us to go north on 81. Currently it's saying it's 186 miles from here to Philly. Let's see how, uh, what the difference is by going this way. Well, Thomas wants us to make a go back up north again but we're gonna take this 70 east I believe we gotta be on the left lane yeah Left lane it is. Towards Frederick.
Hello, Mr. Tampers. Tampers trying his best to act like he's lonely just so he can get food. <laughs> There's Tampers playing hide and seek underneath my armpit. Okay, uh, Thomas, our GPS is finally done recalculating. It's telling us now to take I-70 for 25 miles towards Baltimore. That it is now down to 173 miles to Philadelphia. Do they slow down when I get in? There's a somewhat of an issue or a topic that somebody wanted me to address. Not specifically the way I'm going to address it, but I suppose in a related way, in my opinion, I suppose. From what I gather is a lot of you out there had the dream to... Uh, drive a truck you have the itch to drive a truck and you don't really you don't really know whether it's for you if it's too hard if it's the lifestyle well it's you know it's not it's not just a job it, it, it really will it's kind of like how do I say this it's kind of like a kid out of high school when he joins the military. The very first thing that they do in training, from according to my son anyway, the very first thing that they do with kids in boot camp is uh, they will take the civilian out of you <laughs> and replace it into the military way of thinking it well they will completely just erase your civilian thoughts and process and well in trucking it is also somewhat like that not as dramatic or drastic as that but uh, yeah it's the longer you're in it the more the more you become immersed into that life and way of thinking and seeing the world in a whole different way. 
So, you know, compared to a local job or working for a factory, yeah, you you change, you broaden your horizon by the new job that you have. But still, you get to go home every night and live with the civilian life. So it doesn't really change you. But in this case, in this job, you're you're in it more than you're in it more than you are home at your house. This is, gosh, I don't know how many days I stay out in a year. I would imagine out of twelve months, I probably. I probably only get to stay, what, a total of 30 or 40 days? So percentage-wise, I don't know what that comes out to, what the percentage difference is that I, I live here in the truck or I live in the house. So the whole point of what I'm trying to say is it's really, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a job. Is it hard? At first, just like anything else in life. Remember your first day of uh, driver's ed? Your first day at your job? You didn't think you were gonna make it? <laughs> Although some of you out there are the exceptions of the rules, like Larry. But um, pretty much, it's you know, it was it was tough for me anyway. The job was different. I mean, the job was really difficult for me. But what I really found really more difficult, above all, was being out on the road. The, the life the lifestyle that was the hardest for me because I grew up in a culture where I am I was surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of real close friends and relatives a very close net of friends and best friends and we hung out just every day and one day I found myself out here on the road surrounded by thousands and thousands of people yet I have never been felt so lonely and so alone and that was the most difficult adjustment for my uh, for me in, in this life on this job so that's something that you gotta you gotta think about now if you still have the itch to do this job well if you can afford you know I think money wise is the biggest issue of this job I realize that you know once you get the itch no matter how much you scratch it it will never go away until until you really try it. And some of us out here can't afford to make a mistake. We can't go to a truck driving school, get a five, six thousand dollar school student loan, and six months down the road, it's, you kind of decide, oh dear, what in the world did I get myself into? This is not for me. Now you're stuck with the student loan. So I say, can you afford that student loan? Can you pay for it if things don't work out? I'm not gonna sit here and discourage you, you know, not to do it. But I am here to give you the reality and what could happen.
sometimes in life the only way to get rid of that itch is just to get into it and really just uh, find out you know but just like everything else in life that could get really expensive Any pointers? Well, there there are reputable uh, reputable truck driving schools out there. How do how do was how does one research which school among the thousands are the one you know you should go for? I don't know. I'm not the research kind of a guy. I can only tell you this, uh, the, uh, I've heard so many good word about, uh, about the Fox Valley Tech, uh, Technical School in Appleton, Wisconsin. And that's the only truck driving school I know of. But really, I think this is kind of a a cheap opinion of myself, uh, of my opinion, I think the best way to go is to find a truck drive, a trucking school that will pay for your tuition, or if they have their own uh, trucking school, I, I really think that's the best way to go. Oh yeah, as long as you work for them for a year, you're debt free. That's another point too, is that uh, if you're going to try this job, you got to owe it to yourself and your, you know, you got to be committed enough to at least be able to do a year of it or long enough to get rid of your uh, student loan. You can't go in this job and six months down the road say, oh, no, I can't do it anymore. And now you're stuck with, you know, I guarantee you four or $5,000 student loan. But I also say this topic has been talked about, discussed, and uh, explored many, many, many different times by other truck drivers out there that are a thousand times more knowledgeable than I am, and a thousand and uh, a thousand more knowledgeable than I. I could ever be comes the rain. Oh boy, there goes the cameras. I just hope that waterproofing thing I did works. 
or we'll be out of business. There we go. I hope it survives. I will survive. Well, they're still on, so that means it's still working. <laughs> You know, I'm beginning to realize that the best camera for the outside view, the main camera, is not a is not a video camera. I think it's the action camera that uh, does a better job. Like this one here, it seems to just focus on the raindrops. <laughs> 